So you're probably wondering, what is the structure of this class? This class has a really unique structure. So we're going to start off with a, an engineering lecture about the material. So for example, you may learn something about iron and steel one week. Each week is a different module or a different material. And then after that, you're going to read the chapter to learn a case study about um, some historical or sociological significance of that material uh, and how it's impacted society. So for example, we might learn about Andrew Carnegie and how he influenced the creation of, of US Steel and, uh, and in the process applied a principle, a social principle we call creative destruction. So there's gonna be comprehensive quizzes interlaced without the reading and this lecture. And then you're gonna get to watch a really cool video. So we've worked with a company called Bruno White to create some awesome videos and these videos talk about new materials like, in this case, it would be magnesium alloys. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a written exercise where you apply the lessons of mm -hmm. creative destruction, for example, in this case, to the, a, a new alloy, like magnesium alloys. And you ask yourself, if I was gonna create a company based on magnesium alloys, how would I apply creative destruction to that? Who would I be putting out of business, for example, and, and, and what would be the impact of that? And how do I resolve that conflict so that I can understand this? And that's gonna involve basically understanding an entanglement. And so you're gonna learn about what we mean by entanglement uh, as a way of, of summarizing the final part of that particular module. So every lesson that we do together in this course is going to teach us more things about the relationship of materials in society. Because mm -hmm. it's a relationship that goes both ways. Right. Materials shape society. Society shapes uh, our relationships materials with each other. Yeah. Materials innovations. There you have it. Now, what you do, what you call this relationship that goes many directions, you call that entanglement. We're almost in this tangled web mm -hmm. with materials and people and the sources of these materials right. and the processors of these materials and the users of these materials and the effects of these materials sure. in different places. How do you recycle it? What do you do with the waste products of these materials? You get the idea. It's a tangled web and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. We're dependent upon materials to shape our lives, but materials are dependent upon us and each other. So at the end of every week, we want you to draw a diagram with all of these connections around yourself and the material that you learned that week exactly. and other things in the world. Now this is a very free response activity because you have to bring your knowledge from your lives to this course as well and think about what you're learning from the lectures, what you're learning from the book chapters, but also how you've experienced relationships to materials in your life. You know, and this really forces you to broaden mm -hmm. your perspective, right? A lot of times as an engineer or as a non-engineer, you may be very focused on one specific aspect of something and not really look at the big picture. And an entanglegram sort of forces you to broaden out your perspective and look at the big picture and understand exactly how complicated it is so that you can appreciate the challenges that you may run into, right? As you go forward, either from a, from a sociological standpoint of how am I gonna use that material or from an engineering standpoint of what am I gonna create and invent? Absolutely. The final activity that we will do together throughout, and it will build throughout the entire, the entire course, pardon me, is called the impact paradigm. Now the impact paradigm goes back to our second tetrahedron there, where you have material, society, history, and technology as all points. And the impact paradigm will ask us to gather, as we read together through this course, questions that if we answer them will tell us what the impact of materials is on society. So for example, history is a point on our tetrahedron. One of the things that you need to know to understand the importance of, let's pick a material, clay, on society, is you sure. have to know, where did we first discover right. the material Right, when was it first clay? used? Absolutely. Yeah, and why? Exactly. So that's something to know about clay's impact. Let's take another point on the tetrahedron, technology. What's yeah. a question, Kevin, that yeah. you would ask so, about technology? So you technology? might ask yourself, what technology was available at that time that enabled us to use this new material? That's true. What was not? I could make a fire hotter. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden I could make iron instead of bronze. Or I could actually use uh, electricity. So now all of a sudden I could make aluminum, mm -hmm. which we hadn't even discovered until we figured out how to make electricity. So that's a good question about how technology Im uh, impacts the materials, uh, right. impact on society. Let's take another example. The material itself, you know something about materials. What's a question that you would ask about a material that would help us explore its impact on society? Well, I might look at it and say, is what are the properties of this material? That's, what that's what what's really unique about mm -hmm. this material that makes it something different from what I got already available to me? Why would I want to use it? And it also, of course, means not just physical properties, but how much does it cost? 
Is mm -hmm. it a conflict material? So there's a lot of other additional materials questions that, that come into play, but from a material, pure material standpoint, I would just simply ask, what is the property and how could I use it? Okay, so you asked uh, if a material was a conflict material. That would be something like a blood diamond, for example, a material that is involved in warfare, warfare over the sure. sourcing of the material. Yeah. I would say that's a social. Uh, right. That would go under the social section of the impact right, paradigm. Right, absolutely, absolutely. So and that's so, a question that you would add to the impact paradigm about sure. the social. And that's a very important question because if you don't think about it, for example, Coltran is, a, is an alloy mm. that you use to get tantalum from and it's, it's a well-known conflict material. It, it supports conflict in Central Africa. And so if you're developing something, you may not want to use that material or you're going to have to turn around and certify it's conflict free before you can use that's that material. True. And so it has a big impact on whether or not you're going to be successful yeah. with that material. So there are these four categories of our tetrahedron on the impact paradigm. Every week, we will ask you to add a question to any of those categories. You can add more than one question if you like, but add at least one. And by the end of the course, you'll have a large number of questions on that impact paradigm that you'll use to shape your midterm and your final projects. And if you have questions on the impact paradigm assignments or the entanglement assignments, we'll have an example for you with some example questions and an example entanglement diagram. Right, the goal is really to create a really good in-depth impact paradigm set of questions that you can then use, right? And, they, and you'll be developing these as you do your entanglegrams. And so this is all going to help you understand the big picture of the materials you're looking at. Yes, as my colleague in history says uh, about the past, we can't put it behind us. And so in this course, we'll really be exactly. looking from the past to develop the, the lessons that will help us to prepare for the future. Exactly. So what should students do to succeed in this course? Well, obviously, you got to keep up with the class. You're going to have to familiarize yourself with the syllabus mm -hmm. and the grading rubrics. Mm -hmm. So what, what do we use to judge how you're succeeding in this class? Absolutely. And certainly when you read the chapters and you watch all of the videos and the lectures, make sure you're taking notes, make sure you're taking the quizzes and, and understanding what the main points will be because you'll see those again on the exams. Right. And so the bottom line is read, read, read. Make sure you stay up with this class. Yes. But in addition to the quiz assignments and making sure that you, you get the main concepts out of the content, we want you to think creatively. We want you to think deeply about the materials in your life, about the case studies from our, our human past about how we've used those materials and how they relate to the ways that you might use materials today, what needs you see in that area. That's right. Our knowledge about materials is always growing and incomplete. And so this course is a chance for you to add your own knowledge and experiences with materials to the collective pool of knowledge. That's right. I mean, be creative, have fun with this class. This is supposed to stimulate your imagination. Think big. You've got future materials. You've got a lot of knowledge we're going to give you, and hopefully you can have a lot of fun with it. Absolutely. And in the great spirit of knowledge production, please make sure that you reference your work. Uh, use what you've learned with all of the content in this course, content that you've gathered independently, content that you have from your own lives. Absolutely. Use that to do your assignments. Use that to support your thoughts and the content that you've learned. And definitely tell us where you got all of that information from. So, enjoy. <laughs> have fun. <laughs> Go get them. <laughs>